Romanticism as a literary movement was a rebel against the classical view of literature, which for the most part seemed mechanical, artificial and impersonal. The classical view of literature is influenced by the classical theory of mind, which believes that the human mind is a passive recipient of the external world, therefore it does not modify the world in any way. It follows the theory of tabula rasa, according to which humans are born without any prior knowledge. For them, the mind at the time of birth is like a blank slate, and as we grow older, it takes on the impressions from the outer world. In simple words, human mind evolves only through the experience of life. More or less, this view of the human mind continued to dominate the Western thought for a long time, with slight variations. And this view in literature is known as a mimetic theory, according to which all that the poet does is to imitate the real world. Therefore, it is their business to focus not on the individual, but on the human dress as a whole. And by using reason, poet must produce his work. While the romantic theory of knowledge questions this very feature of the classical worldview, which it dears the most. Hello and welcome to Literocious, I'm Yash Purohit and in this video, I'm going to explain the main features of Romanticism. Romantics, as said earlier, dismissed all the opinions of the classical view. For them, poetry is a subjective and therefore focuses on the individual artist, not on the human race. Art is not an imitation of the outer world, rather it is the innermost experience of man. And if art reflects the external world at all, artists do it with the power of imagination. And unlike Aristotle who believed that the cause of poetry is formal, the end of which is determined by the purpose it serves, romantics such as Wordsworth define poetry as a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Also, each romantics has a slightly different version of romanticism, but there are few ideas central to their thought, which I am going to discuss in this video. Imagination Defining imagination is a tricky job, but in the simplest manner, we can say that the imagination is the mental action of forming new ideas that do not exist in the real world and are not present to the senses. But such meaning did not exist in the 18th century. It was believed that the images move across the mind's eye. If they recur in the same sequence as originally experienced, it is memory. But if they recur randomly or combine in such a manner that it produces a new whole, it is imagination. So, for romantics, imagination is a creative process which transcends reason. It is an active process that does not merely reproduce the objective world, rather it produces the new world by itself. Individualism For romantics, a man is an autonomous entity and therefore the business of the poet is to focus not on the human dress as a whole but on the individual. This idea of individualism is totally in opposition to the classical idea of the human dress as a whole. While Johnson, a classicist, writes that the business of the poet is to examine not the individual but the species, Black, a romantic, writes, to generalize is to be an idiot, to particularize is the long distinction of merit. This is why when Wordsworth attempted to write on the subject of man, nature and universe, he produced the prelude, an autobiographical poem instead of something similar to Pop's essay on man. Organicism If the work of art is the product of inspiration, then how does it achieve the form and unity? The Romantics answer it by considering the work of art as an organism. When the material and the spirit combine together, the organism becomes whole. Similarly, the work of art when combined with the spirit becomes the whole and achieves its form and unity. Shelley remarkably compares the creation of the poem with that of the child growing in mother's womb. Once born, the child has its own life and matures on its own. This idea of organicism further leads us to the autonomous artwork. So in a nutshell, Romanticism focuses more on the idea of art for the art's sake. 